Hey guys, in this video, I'm going to show you my newest journal build that I will be using for the first year or so while living in Japan. I wanted to have a journal ready to go as soon as my plane touches down, since it will likely take several months for my craft supplies and household belongings to arrive from the States. And the first section of this video will be a flip through of the journal. And then the remainder of the video will be my process and how I built the journal. It will be sped up because I did have several hours of footage to condense down to fit into one video, but I will go ahead and leave timestamps for each section of the build process in case you want to click to the next section since it is a longer video. So this journal is a three signature hidden spine and it is covered in a faux leather and this really pretty trim on both the inside and outside of the journal. It has about 166 um, spots or pages to journal on, and this closure is actually a hairband that I got from Dollar Tree that I decided to repurpose to hold the book closed. Um, and I just thought it was really pretty. It reminded me of cherry blossom. So on the inside, you can see I also lined it with that really beautiful trim. And I have a lot of scrapbook paper in this journal. I got a couple of them um, specifically to make this journal and then others I got um, from my personal collection. And it's very eclectic, but at the same time it is themed. And I did make a lot of pockets. I sewed a lot of pockets and belly bands. I have a couple of vintage postcards from Japan. And I also used a lot of the scraps from building the journal to tuck in some of the pockets to use later to journal on or to um, paste pictures on of my journeys and adventures in Japan. And I also put in random papers just for that more eclectic style. So I do have, um, like music notes, I have some planner, old planner pages, I have some coffee dyed paper um, that I dyed myself, and then some envelopes. And again, the majority of this journal is built off of scrapbooking papers, but I did add just enough random papers like the music sheets and the coffee dyed papers and the envelopes in between those um, 12 by 12 sheets to make it look um, more junky like my traditional journals that I like to build which are mostly like vintage themed this one I feel is a little bit different than what I typically do or typically build it does still have that vintage element to it um, but it's also very fun and bright at the same time there's dark elements and bright elements again which gives it that more eclectic look I have fabrics um, in the journal and different textures of papers and I just really love how this journal turned out and I personally enjoy building a new journal just as much as I enjoy actually using my journals whenever I sit down and start building a new journal it's always fun to just go through my supplies and all my papers and just start picking out different pieces and watching it all come together with my own hands and usually I'll throw on like a Netflix show or a podcast and drink a couple cups of coffee while I'm building my journals, which is why I always have to do voiceovers because I'm usually watching or listening to something to do with either true crime or some sort of documentary that I can listen and follow along with while I'm working. It's just a whole dance that I really enjoy. What I also love about building journals is that each journal that I make is one of a kind and a reflection of my style at the time. So sometimes I prefer my journals to look more junky, so I'll include more vintage elements and things like packaging or even make a journal out of something like a cereal box. And I do have a couple tutorials on my channel building off of a cereal box and a biscuit box. So I'll include those links down below. But for this journal, I wanted to include more of the pretty scrapbooking papers and junk journals have really come a long way and have gained a lot of interest in the past several years. And while the original first junk journals were typically made out of things that would be thrown away, like packaging, magazines, paper bags, that sort of thing, 
Junk journals have evolved to include supplies like scrapbooking paper and other mass-produced supplies. There's a huge junk journal community. I love scrolling through Instagram and seeing other junk journalers' creations, and you can buy really beautiful junk journals on places like Etsy, and you'll see that the majority of those journals are made with supplies like this one that I'm showing you right now. So again, while yes, the origin of junk journals came from using actual junk or whatever you could find around your house, it has changed and evolved over time. And I actually consider what I put in my journals to be the junk part. I will collect ticket stubs, park maps, food packaging, receipts from a purchase that was special to me, and glue it or staple it in my journal. So that's the junk part for me personally. Sometimes I like to paint or draw in my journals or use it like a scrapbook and add pictures of my kids. So a junk journal can really be used for anything you want. There's really no rules. Sometimes I get comments about using so many supplies in my journals instead of using actual junk, but I also understand that some people have been doing it for a long time and their views or opinions may be different than mine. And that's okay, every journal is unique and a preference of that individual's perception of a junk journal and their style. So here are the last few pages of my journal. And again, I'm going to go ahead and speed up the remainder of this video or the build or process portion of making this journal, just because again, I did have several hours of footage that I had to condense down to fit in one video. But again, there will be sections um, labeled so that you can click to whatever section that you want to go to if you don't want to watch the whole video. I totally understand. So let's go ahead and get started with prepping the cover. For the cover, I used the book board from this book I had used in an Easter DIY a couple years ago. It was actually a stack of three books that I had painted and decaled with the names Flopsy Mopsy and Cottontail from Peter Rabbit. So I am just removing the decal, which in the end I could have just left it there. But this particular book I got from Dollar Tree, and if you're someone that can't stand the sight of a book being torn apart, then please skip forward to the next section. But I'm just using this little tool from Dollar Tree to separate the signatures from the spine. And so I'm just running that tool along and then I clean it up with scissors because I'm actually going to be using the spine as well. Usually when I build a junk journal, I like to do the cover first, but I wasn't sure what image I wanted on my cover. So I decided to go ahead and start going through my scrapbooking papers to um, start building my signatures and kind of figure out what I wanted to use as my cover. And these two paper packs are from Stamperia. I did purchase them on Amazon. They were a little bit cheaper than buying them in store. And then I also used other 12 by 12 scrapbooking papers from other paper pads that I either picked up at Michael's or Hobby Lobby. And so I'm just going through the papers, kind of selecting what I would want in my journal. And as I mentioned before, this is one of my favorite parts of building a new journal is just going through all of my different papers and my collections and kind of picking out things that I think that would look well in the journal. And sometimes I won't use all of the pieces that I select. It kind of just depends on when I build the signatures, how it looks, I might take things out or move things around. Um, but this part is definitely one of my favorite parts of building new journals. And I'll do my best to link down below where I got certain things from, like these paper pads I picked up from Hobby Lobby. So if I can find the link, I will do my best to leave it down below in the description box. And I do actually get a lot of my crafting supplies from Amazon as well. I do have an Amazon storefront where I have all of my favorite crafting supplies listed. So I'll leave that link down below as well. And then some of the elements like the laces, um, and things you'll see later on are actually from Taperlogy, which I'm also affiliated with, and they have junk journal supplies as well. So I will do my best to leave everything linked for you guys, but please don't feel like you need to purchase a bunch of supplies to make a junk journal because you really don't. You can find and use things that you already have around your house. And again, I will link those videos where I made a junk journal out of like a cereal box 
in a cracker box. Um, you can use gift bags, recycled items. You don't have to use scrapbooking paper. You don't have to go purchase a bunch of things to make a junk journal. Again, this is just what I have been collecting over the years, and so I'm going to use it. So now that I've selected my papers, I'm just measuring my cover to see how much I need to cut off of my scrapbooking papers once they're folded in half to make them fit nicely inside my journal. So um, I'm just using my paper trimmer for this and this first um, scrapbooking paper is kind of going to be my template. And you'll see me kind of flip around the page a lot. And that's just because I'm seeing which part I want to cut off and how I want it to be folded. Um, so I'm taking all of those 12 by 12 scrapbooking papers and folding them in half and then using um, a bone folder to make a sharp or straight crease. And while I'm doing this, I'm also trying to figure out what image I wanna use as my cover. So again, that's why this build is a little bit backwards and I didn't have the cover completed first because I was going through all of the papers, trying to figure out what I wanted the, the cover, the image on the cover to be. And on some of the scrapbooking papers, I will actually fold up a few inches and turn it into a pocket. And again, I'm using that first scrapbooking paper that I cut as a template to see how tall I need it to be because um, folding it in half, the 12 by 12 sheet in half is actually going to fit inside my journal um, widthwise but not lengthwise. So now I'm going to go ahead and get out my paper trimmer and cut some of the length off to fit in my journal lengthwise again because my papers fit fine widthwise but I do need to cut off a few inches to get them to fit and again I'm going through the papers and kind of opening them up and making sure that I'm cutting off the piece that I don't want in the signature um, and I will use those trimmings to fill the pockets later on in the journal so nothing gets wasted even if I don't use all of the scraps from making a journal I will put them in my craft storage and then use them in other crafts or other journal builds. And here is another example of using single-sided scrapbooking paper to turn into pockets by just folding up the bottom a few inches and I can go ahead and sew those pockets up later on.
And right here, I'm just checking and making sure that those scrapbooking papers that I folded and cut are going to fit nicely inside the journal. And then these are all of the non scrapbooking papers that I picked out from my collection that I want to incorporate in the journal. So I'm gonna go ahead and fold those in half as well. And I don't have to cut any of these papers because they will um, fit inside the journal. So I have like a book page here, I have some coffee, dyed paper, I have some brown craft paper, I have some um, planner pages that were unused in some of my planners, I have some music notes, I also put in a couple of paper bags and envelopes. What I like to do before building my signatures is have all of my different papers separated into different piles or categories. So I'm separating the scrapbooking paper that has the pockets in one pile from the other scrapbooking papers. And then I have like my book pages and planner pages in one pile. I have my line paper and my coffee dyed paper in one pile, my envelopes in another pile. It's just a lot easier to put things together. And right here, I'm just picking out the main or the outside of each signature first. And then I just start picking from each pile and kind of layering things on top of each other. And I do end up switching the covers on one of these and I go back and add and move things around later on. But this is pretty much how I like to do it. I like to sometimes have an envelope in the center of the signature because when it's closed and bound, I can hide the string if I want to. And this is pretty much how I set up every journal that I make with separating the different papers and piles. It just makes things a lot easier. So right here I have all of my, my three signatures established, but I did want to go ahead and use up this leftover scrapbooking paper. So I put, I think, two of each of what was left over in each signature. And then after that, I decided to go back to my, I think it was eight by eight scrapbooking papers and fold those in half and add those in too, just to add a little bit of variation between the page sizes because there was a lot of 12 by 12 um, scrapbooking paper that was folded in half, if that makes sense. So right here, I'm just taking that eight by eight pad and folding the pages in half. And again, I will go ahead and add these to the three signatures that um, I have almost completed building. And if you happen to catch the part where I moved one of these eight by eight scrapbooking papers aside, that was when, this was when I had finally figured out what image I wanted on my cover. So um, I went ahead and set that aside before I started folding these eight by eight papers in half. So now my signatures are finally complete and I'm happy with the look. So I'm just gonna go ahead and again, put them inside of my cover to make sure everything fits correctly, nothing is sticking out. And now I can begin, or I guess continue <laughs> finishing the cover. To decorate the cover, I'm going to use two rolls of this Dollar Tree faux leather in black, and I'm just going to lay out 
my journal cover and then I'm going to trim off each corner. And I love this Dollar Tree product. I knew as soon as I picked it up in the store, I actually got it in brown and navy um, as well. But I knew as soon as I saw it and picked it up in the store that it was going to be used someday as a journal cover. So I was so excited to use it. So I'm just using some fabric tack right here to go ahead and wrap this thing. And I actually ended up needing to use hot glue just because of how thick this material is. And fabric tack does take a little bit of time to dry down. So I am using a couple of clips to hold things in place while I get out my glue gun and then start using both the fabric tack and hot glue together. The hot glue is going to give it a really fast bond while the fabric tack has a little bit of time to dry. And I was running out of the fabric tack glue. Um, so I did use a lot of hot glue in this journal actually in the end. Um, but it all worked out. I've had my journal sitting on my desk for about a week now completed and it has not fallen apart. So as I'm gluing each side down, I'm also opening and closing each side um, just to make sure there's the right amount of slack to be able to um, open and close my journal. Uh, this material was very forgiving. It didn't bunch up on the outside like a lot of fabric that I've used in the past does. So I really liked how clean it looked on the outside. Um, so just do one side at a time. Anytime you're using any sort of fabric, don't try to do it all at once. You really want to make sure you are bending and, <clears throat> excuse me, creasing things like in the spine area. You want to make sure you get a nice crease in there to allow your fabric or whatever material you're using to flex properly, if that makes sense. And once I finished wrapping the cover, I just took my scissors and went around the corners and cut off any of the excess fabric. And then I used the second roll of faux leather to line the inside. This part was a little bit unnecessary. I ended up covering the inside of the journal with scrapbooking paper, but it did in the end make this journal a little bit more durable. Um, it's very, the cover, the front and back cover is very thick and durable, which will be good in the end for me for traveling because this thing is going to be lugged around in my suitcase. And um, so this part did end up being okay in the end, just because for my situation, um, I did want it to be a little bit more durable, um, but I could have easily just slapped on my scrapbooking paper from this point because you're not going to see what's underneath the scrapbooking paper anyways. Um, so right here, I'm just doing the same thing pretty much that I did with the outside cover, doing one little section at a time and gluing things down, making sure I crease the inside of the spine with my finger. I think I go back with my um, little tool and then make sure everything is nice and adhered. And once I have the inside of my journal lined, I just use my glue gun and my bone folder to kind of um, scrape the edges together or bond the um, edges together. And it might look like a hot mess right now, but in the end, it turns out looking really nice. And so I'm just trimming off the excess I end up using my little Dollar Tree rotary cutter and pull off any excess glue that has dried and that's sticking out. 
and you just use my scissors again to kind of trim trim off any excess fabric so this is the image that I decided on for my cover and I just thought it was so beautiful and the perfect size for the cover image and this is one of the the scrapbooking papers from that 8x8 pack from Stamperia it's called Oriental Garden and I thought about using this like bookmark size as this for the spine but then I decided that it it wouldn't look right um, so I just decided to glue this image on the cover so I used my Fabri-Tac glue and then I used a daub of hot glue in each corner to let it um, or to keep it in place while the Fabri-Tac dried and then I just used my hot glue gun to go around the border of the image with this really beautiful trim. I think I got this trim from Michaels in like one of those um, trim remnants packs that you can I think get for like ten dollars. It just has a bunch of random um, scraps of trim, and it was the perfect amount to line both the outside cover image and the inside cover images as well. So I ended up using this thing on this trim on both the inside and the outside of the journal. And I just use hot glue. I didn't want to mess around with using a fabric tack because I didn't really have enough of it left anyways. And so I'm just doing a section by section on the outside cover. For the inside of the journal, I decided to use um, this scrapbooking paper. I thought it was perfect. I really liked the vintage look of this atlas. This was um, another paper from one of those paper packs that I purchased from Stamperia through Amazon, and I just thought it was perfect, and I like how th both sides kind of work together. It's kind of cohesive like they were meant to be. Um, so I'm just using hot glue to adhere those to the faux leather. And again, I didn't need to line the inside of my journal with another piece of faux leather. As you can see, the scrapbooking paper is covering it up anyways. Um, so it didn't, doesn't really matter. But again, I thought it was okay for durability purposes. And now I'm using the rest of that trim from the cover to line the inside. And it worked out perfectly because it actually covered up all of those like dried, crusty <laughs> um, pieces of hot glue that you can kind of see at the bottom um, from when I adhered both of those fabrics to the front and back cover. So it worked out in the end, it looked really nice. I've never actually used a trim on the inside cover before, so this is very new to me and I really love how this kind of happy accident turned out because it ended up looking really um, put together and beautiful in the end. So now that the outside and inside cover is done, I just take my scissors and kind of trim off the strings that are hanging off some of the trim and clean it up a bit. And then I put my signatures inside just to see how much um, bulk I can add during the embellishment phase of the journal, which is not a lot 
but I did want to add a little bit of embellishing. And for the embellishment process, I just picked out a couple things from my personal collection. So I have like a chocolate box from Tokyo that my husband brought back from Japan a couple years ago and I've just been kind of holding on to it. And then these fabric squares are actually from a Taper Lodgy box that I recently did an unboxing on my channel. I will link that video down below as well as these lace fabric scraps. I ended up only using the flower lace to add like a belly band to the journal and some of these like textured papers. I knew I couldn't add too much more bulk to this journal just because when I actually end up using it while I'm in Japan, I know I'm going to be collecting different pieces of ephemera from my travels and my journey. So I knew that was going to add bulk. And I'm also going to stuff the journal with the scraps from building the journal in all of the pockets. And this little journal right here is actually an ephemera holder that I built and I sewed in lots of clear pockets to hold ephemera that I collect. Um, so I'm just kind of going through it and picking out pieces in here that I think might look cute in the journal. And so yeah, I think I actually have a flip through of this ephemera holder somewhere in my junk journal playlist if you wanna go through that and check it out. And I actually got this idea from Barbara from 49 Dragonflies for the ephemera holder. So I can't recommend her channel enough. She's amazing, all of her vintage art is so beautiful and she's very inspiring. So I de definitely recommend 49 Dragonflies. But right here, I'm just using my little handheld mini Singer sewing machine. I picked this up at Walmart and it's perfect for paper crafting and sewing up pockets like you see me doing right here. Um, it's a very simple little handheld. You can use it actually as a handheld sewing machine or a like mini desktop sewing machine. It can't handle anything super thick, um, but it can do like light fabrics um, and it does have a very simple, just single stitch. It can't do like zigzag patterns or anything like that. There's actually not a back lever or back stitch lever. So you actually have to lift up the presser foot, move it, and then move the little knob back and forth to release the, um, thread. So it's very user friendly. I'm not the best at sewing anyways. I do have a um, older like full size sewing machine that I've used in the past, but this is just really easy to use for light um, stitching for paper, my journals and the cardstock and things like that. So while I'm sewing up pockets and adding belly bands to the journal, I'm also filling those pockets with the remnants from building the journal and then the other pieces of ephemera that came from my personal stash. And I'm also opening up all of the ends of the envelopes and paper bags um, and sliding things in there as well. Um, so I'm kind of just doing it all at once, but um, that's pretty much it for embellishing. I, again, I didn't do too much embellishing for this journal because I'm going to be adding things. I know I'm going to be adding a lot of bulk later on.
For making tabs, I like to use fabric scraps and I'll probably, as my journal fills up, I might go back and um, add more tabs, but I just wanted to show you pretty much how I do it. I will either use like a scrap of fabric or lace or ribbon. You can make paper tabs, but I decided just to make a couple of little tabs to show you um, other ways I like to use fabric in my journals. For the hidden spine and binding process, I cut up three pieces of heavy cardstock. I actually used the back of a paper pad because it's a little bit thicker. And then I cut that up and then two pieces of Tyvek paper all cut the same size of my spine. And all I do is just layer those pieces on top of each other with glue. Um, so I use the cardstock, then the Tyvek cardstock then layer Tyvek, and then the last layer is the cardstock. You don't have to use Tyvek paper. I just like using it because it's um, very durable. It's hard to rip. A lot of like USPS mailers um, are made out of Tyvek. I get my um, Tyvek sheets from Amazon. I will link that down below. And I'm just using paper clips to kind of hold it in place while it's drying. For binding, you're gonna need a template to plot where to put your holes to bind your signatures into the spine. I just like to use a piece of paper that's the same size of my spine. And depending on the number of signatures you have, I have three. So in this case, I just fold it in half lengthwise, and then I fold each end into the half mark. And then I do the same thing um, the other direction. And that's going to give me even evenly spaced points. And I just mark it with a Sharpie. And you also want to make sure that you label your template with either a T or right top um, and use it in the same direction when you're punching the holes in every signature and then when you actually go to bind um, the signatures into the hidden spine. So right here I'm just using paper clips to secure everything from shifting while I punch in the holes, making sure everything um, is lined up correctly. And then I like to use a book as kind of like a cradle while I'm punching my holes. So I kind of let um, the spine of the signature settle in the book. And then I have to use a ruler because, um, because of the trim of my fabric, I have to make sure that I am leaving myself a half an inch between the top and bottom of the signature to make sure that um, my holes are lined up correctly. So that's what I'm doing right here. And then I'm just going to use a piece of washi tape to hold things in place. And then using an owl tool, I'm just punching in my holes, making sure that they go all the, all the way through. And then I'm just going to repeat that process for signatures number two and three. <laughs> So now that all of my holes are done in my signatures, I'm just lining them up, making sure that they're all straight. And now I'm going to punch the holes in what's going to be the hidden spine, which is the stack of papers and Tyvek that I glued together earlier. So I'm just gonna take that same template and tape it around with some washi tape to keep it secure while I punch the holes. I'm gonna bring back the book and then just use my awl again to punch in the holes making sure that they go all the way through. And because I'm going to be going in and out of both sides of the template, I wanna take my awl and just kind of go back and open up the back side of 
um, the hidden spine a little bit to make the thread slide through easier. So now I'm ready to go and bind in my signatures. For binding, you want to use something bigger than like your standard size needle. I don't know what these are called, but they're a little bit bigger. And um, I think maybe you would use them for like maybe leather sewing leather or something i'm not quite sure um, but i'm also using some embroidery thread and i'm just waxing the thread with this uh, little waxing block that i got from um, amazon you can easily slide it through to wax your thread it's a lot cheaper than buying actual waxed thread um, so that's what i'm doing is i'm just um, waxing this embroidery thread to make it slide through the signatures a lot easier and it's, it makes it a little bit more durable because it has a wax coating around it. Usually I'll cut off about three lengths of the signature for my thread to use to bind each signature in. Uh, you just want to leave yourself enough thread um, to tie it off at the end. And it's pretty much a matching game. There's a million ways to bind a journal. I'll show you a couple different ways um, in this tutorial, but you just tape off the end if you want. And it's pretty much a matching game. You just match the holes up to the holes in your signature. And I usually like to work um, my way from the back of the book or the journal to the front. So I'm doing the last signature first. And so I'm just matching up that last row of holes on my spine with my um, signatures. And so I'm going back through the center hole right here, trying not to re-thread or go through the thread that's already there. And just take your time. Um, sometimes you'll have to open the pages like I am right here to make sure that you're not making any new holes and you're going through the original holes that you plotted. So now I'm going to go through the last hole or the last row and then connect it to the last or the bottom hole of my signature. And again, I'm just opening up pages to make sure that I'm guiding my needle through um, the original holes I made. And then all you're going to do is tie it off. So as you can see, the ends of my string are in the center hole and the bottom hole. So I'm just gonna tie those together and then trim off the excess for the next signature. I will show you another binding path um, to where both ends come out in the center. Um, again, there's a million different ways that you can bind, but as long as you go through all of the holes and they're straight up and down. Um, that's all that really matters. I've seen some really cool patterns that you can do with binding, but again, I'm just showing you very simple, a very simple binding method. So second signature going through the center hole, going through the top hole again for both the spine and the signature. Now I'm going to jump over, instead of going back through the center, I'm gonna jump over and go through the bottom signature, or the bottom hole of the signature, and then the bottom hole of the spine. And then I'm gonna go back through the center, and that's where my binding is going to end. And you're gonna get a little bit of a tighter, I guess, tie off when you go through the center like this. It's a lot easier to tie off when you end um, when you end your bind in the same starting point. Um, so now I'm just gonna do a signature number three, and I'm gonna follow the same method as the second signature where both of my strings are going to come out of the center.
And here's one of the reasons why I like using envelopes in the center of my signatures is because you can actually hide the binding or the tails of your binding um, by just closing up the un envelope flap and then your spine or your binding is hidden. Um, I don't mind it in some of my journals, but I just wanted to show you an example and then you have the other side. So here is what it all looks like um, bound into the spine that I made out of the cardstock and Tyvek. Now I just need to glue it down or adhere it to the actual cover of the journal. I actually ran out of Fabri-Tac. I had a tiny bit left in another bottle that I found, but I knew it wasn't going to be enough. So that's why I'm using this really thin double-sided tape. It's very durable, um, but I would recommend using something a little bit more heavy duty. Even E6000 probably would work very well, but it ended, it ended up working out. I just let it um, sit for a long time. I actually used the rest of that Fabri-Tac glue that was left in the bottle um, that I had left along with this double-sided tape and it worked out fine. Um, it hasn't come loose yet, but basically all you're going to do is glue your um, hidden spine that you made into your journal cover and that's pretty much how you make a hidden spine. Again, there's a million ways to bind and make journals. This is just the method that I use to make mine. And I did go ahead and add clips just to kind of hold it in place while the glue was drying. Um, and it seemed to help a lot. So I just kind of added paper clips and clips in between the signatures. And yeah, this is it. This is how my journal turned out. And um, for the closure, I am using a Dollar Tree headband. I thought it would be perfect. I didn't want to add holes to this journal. I really like the simple look of this. I didn't want to add a bunch of tassels or anything. And I felt like this little headband worked perfect. At first I was going to use the black headband as a closure, but then I decided it just, it, it stood out too much and I didn't want it to take away from the beautiful cover image. So I thought the purple one looked a lot better and it kind of reminded me of cherry blossoms. So here it is. I hope you guys enjoyed this video, this flip through and then the quick tutorial, even though it wasn't really quick because this video is almost an hour long. But if you're looking for more inspiration or tutorials, I invite you to check out my junk journal playlist. I have lots of videos on there um, and hopefully they inspire you to create a junk journal if you haven't already. But thank you guys so much for hanging out with me and spending time, your time watching this video. I really do appreciate it. I can't wait to use this journal in Japan and I hope you come with me. So until my next video, I hope you guys have an amazing day. Thank you so much for watching and take care.